Hey guys, this is EC Service Tech, and today what we're looking at is the heat pump refrigerant cycle in cooling mode. So what we have is we have a, a low pressure, low temperature vapor refrigerant going into the compressor. It then comes out of the compressor as a high pressure, high temperature vapor refrigerant. All right, so the compressor's job is to raise pressure, which therefore temperature will follow pressure. So now we have high pressure, high temperature vapor refrigerant at its hottest point in the entire system right there. It's called the discharge line then goes through the reversing valve and is still considered the discharge line. It's the high pressure, high temperature vapor refrigerant. It then goes into the outdoor coil, which in this case could be the condenser coil because we're in cooling mode. It then rejects heat and vapor, okay? It continues to reject heat and lower in temperature until it turns into the saturated state where liquid and vapor both exist at the same time. It then turns into a complete liquid, okay? And then it continues to reject heat and lower the temperature of the liquid refrigerant until it comes out at the service valve. The temperature decrease in liquid form between right after the saturated state, right where it turns into a liquid and all the way down by the service valve, that the temperature difference between those two is called the subcooling. And that's how we check refrigerant systems, uh, check the refrigerant charge of a system in cooling mode that has a thermostatic expansion valve at the evaporator coil. All right, so then it goes into the service valve and through the non-active metering device. So regardless of where that metering device is located at on a heat pump, um, you know, it's going to flow around it and through it. So it's not active at this point. It's kind of like a bypass there. All right, so it's going around and through the metering device in a non-active state. It's then still a high pressure, high temperature liquid refrigerant even though it's rejected heat in the outdoor coil. It then goes through the filter dryer where it collects any contaminants and any water vapor. Remember the filter dryer's job is to mainly hold water vapor and it has a fixed capacity. You don't want water uh, mixing with the refrigerant oils because it can turn into alcohol and acids. So then it continues to go through as a high pressure, high temperature liquid refrigerant and it hits the metering device. In this case, the metering device is a thermostatic expansion valve. The thermostatic expansion valve's job is to maintain a certain amount of superheat across the evaporator coil. So the metering device right there, we have a pressure drop right there. It turns the, low, the uh, high pressure, high temperature liquid refrigerant into a 80% liquid, 20% flash gas by reducing the pressure. So as we know, temperature follows that, okay? So it then starts to absorb heat from the house. It then continues to absorb heat until it turns into a saturated state where liquid and vapor both exist. That's where it's able to store most of this, um, this heat from that it's absorbing from the house and that phase change from, from liquid to vapor. It then turns into a complete vapor, okay, and it continues to absorb heat until it comes out of the evaporator coil. So this is a heat, in this case, it's a heat pump and that will be considered the indoor coil, okay? But, but since we're in cooling mode, that is the evaporator coil at this point. So right where it comes out of the saturated state at, it turns into a complete vapor, and it increases in temperature by absorbing the heat in the house until it comes out right out at the evaporator coil. And, and the temperature difference, the temperature increase in vapor form is called the superheat. It then continues through to the service valve, and at the service valve, we, that's where we typically measure total superheat. Okay, so right in the middle of the evaporator coil where it, the saturated state is, right after it comes out of that as a complete vapor, the temperature increase from there all the way over to the service valve, that's called the total superheat. And so we typically measure that actual temperature within a few inches of the service valve. So then we continue as a low pressure, low temperature, vapor refrigerant through the reversing valve and goes into the accumulator. The accumulator's job is to make sure that the compressor does not have any liquid getting into the vapor compressor. So then it goes through the uh, accumulator as a low pressure, low temperature, vapor refrigerant and continues as the same and goes into the compressor. Inside the accumulator, it might be able to pick up some more oil if there's any oil left on the bottom of the accumulator. All right, so then we have low pressure, low temperature, vapor refrigerant coming back into the compressor and the sequence starts all over again. All right, well, I hope that helped. Hope you enjoyed yourself and we'll see you next time at AC Service Tech Channel.